Speaking of bad players, can we now trash Bobby Hart? All right, so now the poor the poor deals. That was the, a segue. That was well done. Thanks. You should be hosting the show. Yeah. Bengals re-sign offensive tackle Bobby Hart. Three years, $21 million. It's only $5.5 million guaranteed. But again, the guaranteed money can be full. I mean, if you just... If he plays the first year, it's far more than five point five million guaranteed because you paid him for the first year of the deal, which we assume is going to happen. He has not played football well at the NFL level yet. That's that's the um, that's my analysis. Good analysis, I like it. Strong opening. He's still young. He is is the answer. So I have many many questions about the Bobby Hart thing. The first is that the <laughs> the quotes coming out of the uh, the coaching staff and the setup there. We're all talking about his passion and his energy and how much he enjoyed it. And honestly, I don't care if he enjoys getting his ass kicked. What concerns me is that he's getting his ass kicked. And that would be, I think, a bigger driving force behind me throwing money at him. Um, The second one was that they looked at his tape and thought he was playing well. I I mean, I I don't know what to do. Again, I don't know. We we joke around with the Mike Zimmer stuff all the time. Like Mike Zimmer comes out and defends his players, right? He defended Matt Khalil against us a couple years ago. I think that quote existed before they re-signed him. Like, I think that quote I was, you. you know, I got just you. a spontaneous deal. Yeah, yeah, he's doing Then that. I don't know. Look, when I'm a GM, and you'll be working for me, so you won't be able to trash yeah, me, right? Twitter guy. Well, you might be moving up. You're, I like some of your takes lately. Oh, yeah. But when I'm a GM and you're working for me, you, might be, you won't be sitting here on the podcast trashing me. But there might be a time I go out there and Leak I talk up one of our lesser players to the media. And then behind closed doors, you're like, Steve, are you serious with that? I'm like, look, I just got to protect my players. Here's my biggest So I don't want to get too into the quotes. Here's my biggest question, though, with Bobby Hart. A year ago, you signed him essentially to a veteran minimum deal because nobody wanted him because he was bad at football. All that's happened between now and then is that he played a season, gave up 10 sacks, was the 73rd ranked tackle of PFF, and generally looked like a bad signing. What convinced you that you needed to lock him up to a three-year deal worth $7 million a year, not another veteran minimum deal. I don't know. I mean, look, the Bengals, they, they've made at least two questionable moves this offseason. They didn't hire me, I mean, yeah. and then they signed Bobby Hart. So I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know. I'm just I, If you want to sign Bobby Hart, okay, you like his energy. You like the fact that he's really enthused about the beatdowns he's taking on tape every week. Sure. I Okay. I wouldn't do it, but, but you know, more of a backup. you be you. But y- you already have him at a veteran minimum deal, and the reason you have him at that is because nobody wanted him. And nothing that's been put on tape in the last 12 months will have changed that fact. So why are you throwing more money at him? This is like the Foles thing, where it's like we needed to give him more money because otherwise the locker room wouldn't buy into him as a leader. It's like well, if we'd given Bobby Hart another veteran minimum deal. Maybe, if you buy, maybe you're buying confidence. I mean, <laughs> Would you not just buy a better player? Have we quantified confidence yet? No. You should have bought a better player. Right. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I mean, I just I don't know the answer. I'm saying I have very many questions with this deal and you're not answering any of them. Oh, I don't have a good answer for it. Okay. The other one that we gave a poor grade <laughs> is the Lions signing Jesse James 5 years, 22.6 million dollars, especially in this tight end market. There's a whole bunch of good tight ends coming in from the draft. There's a lot of tight end twos around the league. Tyler Croft tight making money. Twos. How's that? Yeah. Uh, Dwayne Allen making money. A, a lot of our poor and below average grades are secondary type of tight ends. Dwayne Allen, Tyler Croft, and Jesse James. This is because 12 personnel is the new, uh, the new go-to personnel grouping, Steve. Everyone's yeah, well, getting that could, second tight end. Well, I'm going to quote you and say maybe spend it on a good tight end. Sure, I would. Yeah, Jesse James hasn't graded above 71.6 in any of his four seasons. And his second highest grade is 66.4. I mean, look, Jesse James, the only thing anyone's going to remember about him in 10 years' time is that he was the guy that fixed the pass reception rule. Yeah, he scored the the touchdown that wasn't. Right. That's the only – 10 years' time, the only reason anyone will remember his name is he was the guy that got the the catch rule fixed at the end. I wouldn't wouldn't pay five years and 22.6 million for that, particularly as it's already happened. Like, he's done the good thing that he's going to do in his career. He's already done it. 